right, Matrix and Roadshow fans. Well, I just saw this and I had to do a video on it. I had to do a video on the fact that it seems Disney may have finally admitted in something that's public anyway, an SEC filing that has to do with, well, revenue and shareholders and losing money and having to explain why it is so much of their products are, well, not working out for them. And it seems that Disney has admitted that going woke has hurt their bottom line, in turn hurt the uh, monetary value of their product, in turn hurting their shareholders. And this is very interesting indeed. Now, you see that right there, the invisible hand. This was an article written by uh, Jonathan Turley, um, and he's a legal expert from George Washington. This is from Breitbart today as well. Right here, you can see it. Disney on track to lose nearly $750 million across 13 films in historic year of box office flops. And guys, that's just this year. That doesn't include all the flops from last year. I mean, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny is going to lose a hundred and basically a hundred and sixty million dollars. Little Mermaid, it's gonna lose forty million. Literally the only product on this entire list from this year that made any real money, and one could argue it underperformed. Oh wait a minute, we might have no no the new one, Wish, negative one seventy five. It's a disaster for Disney. It's a disaster. The only one that made any profit, and it only made barely $100 million, was Guardians of the Galaxy th Volume 3. And I would guess the popularity of the two previous movies is what just somehow willed that particular movie and Chris Pratt to some kind of profit. I mean, Chris Pratt is li likable. Guess what? When people are likable, they'll show up if they don't think there's a bunch of politics that's being you know, shoved into their face. Keep in mind, Disney's also got the embar embarrassment that South Park just came out and made fun of them in a total and complete episode of making fun of exactly what it is Disney has done, including Kathleen Kennedy and Star Wars. Let's check this out. This year marks the 300th anniversary of Adam Smith, the iconic figure behind the theory of free markets or of what we have since come to call capitalism. Born in June 17, 1723, Smith went on to explain how the, quote, invisible hand of the market worked as people exercised their choices between certain products. It shaped the economies and challenge of whole governments. One company in particular appears to be learning the lesson. In recent filings, Disney's appears to acknowledge that Smith's invisible hand is giving the, quote, house of mouse the middle finger. In a new corporate disclosure, Disney acknowledges that its controversial political and social agenda is costing the company and its shareholders. In its annual SEC report, Disney acknowledges that, quote, we face the risk relating to misalignment with public and consumer taste and preferences for entertainment, travel, and consumer products. In other words, they're using their own agenda to put out products, and it's an agenda that is not, not relatable to the public and the public doesn't want to consume. However, they've also not course-corrected and continues to shove the same products out. The problem with that? Shareholders want to know, why do you keep doing something that's not working and is failing and losing us money? Your job is to make shareholders as much money as possible. If you know these products are working, I mean, it's been how many years since The Last Jedi came out now? Seven? And they haven't course corrected? Really? In an implied, I mean, and the one product they had, The Mandalorian, they turned it into a female fest this last season and sidelined the main character for a female. And if they're not doing that, it's some kind of LGBTQ agenda in one of these Marvel movies. People are not taking their kids to see Disney movies anymore, folks. And they're not going to their theme parks either. In an implied nod to Smith, the company observes that, quote, the success of our businesses depend on our ability to consistently create compelling content. 
and that, quote, generally our revenues and profitability are adversely impacted when our entertainment offerings and products, as well as our methods to make offerings and products available to consumers, do not achieve sufficient consumer ex- uh, consumer acceptance. So consumers, spit it back in your face. Further consumer perceptions of our position on matters of public interest, including our efforts to achieve certain of our environmental and social goals, often defer widely and present risk to our reputation and brands. Disney and other companies have previously ignored consumer backlash over corporate campaigns such as Disney's opposition to Florida's parental rights and education law. Corporate officials once avoided political controversies and focused on selling their products and services rather than viewpoints. Disney has lost reportedly a billion dollars, a billion dollars, on just four of its recent, quote, woke movie flops. Productions denounced by critics as pushing political agendas or storylines. Yet, until now... The company has continued to roll out underperforming movies as revenue has dropped. It's not a coincidence, folks, that that new woke Snow White movie has been delayed a year. Uh, It's just, look, it's been delayed a year because they they believe it's going to fall on its face. It looks terrible. And there's agendas all over that thing. Not, Not only that, but Rachel Ziegler is running her mouth about People that are fans of the core product. The actual real Snow White story. She's talking trash about those fans. You think that sucker's not going to flop? What's more, Disney stars persist in bad-mouthing its fabled storylines and undermining its new productions. Right there. They just said it. I didn't know that was the next line, but that was convenient to my point. The company admits it has suffered a continued slide in impressions, that is viewership, by 14%. For shareholders, it may seem counterintuitive that corporate executives would trade off profits for political or social agendas. Yeah, if you're looking to make money, you want them to stay the hell out of whatever business isn't going to make you all the money possible. And Disney has refused to get out back out of that business. However, it does serve as a rationale for individual corporate executives who are professionally advanced when they champion such causes. For example, when Alyssa Heiderscheid, vice president of marketing for Bud Light, pledged to drop Bud Light's fratty reputation and embrace inclusivity, oh shit, we all know what happened with Bud Light. The biggest boycott ever. Ever. She was heralded by her colleagues. And she destroyed Anheuser-Busch. Even though her move went on to tank the brand as a whole. Indeed, Bud Light has still not recovered from the loss of billions in profits, market share, and overall market value. The same trend is playing out in the media. Public trust in journalists has fallen to a record low. People will no longer ever... They will no longer ever listen to damn journalists ever again. I mean, the media, it's over. Nobody trusts them. Nobody trusts them. That's the rise of citizen journalism now. We don't give a rip if somebody has a, a journalistic degree from Syracuse, from Michigan, from Northwestern. Nobody gives a rip about that. Because, number one, we've seen all the agendas that happen go down at these colleges now. But just things like the New York Times, uh, how all the mainstream media, ABC, the CBS, NBC, CNN, MSNBC, how they've all treated Trump and Trump supporters, what's went down with the pandemic, nobody's got any trust in the media. It's over. Yet media executives continue to push the advocacy journalism, abandoning objectivity, As former New York Times writer Nicole Hannah-Jones declared, all journalism is activism. No, no, we just won't do it. With falling subscriptions and public backlash, this includes the amusing Let's Go Brandon mantra, 
The journalists continue to saw at the thin branch upon which they are sitting. And while advocacy journalism is no pop, no more popular than woke corporate agendas, it remains wealth maximizing for individual journalists who can receive accolades. They're paying for something that is they're not seeing a return on. I mean, that's just the way it is. In fairness to Disney, there's an expressive element to its products, movies, and artistic creations that emphasize certain motivations and values. So they're coming out and saying, at least there's an artistic part of entertainment. But that doesn't mean people are going to buy it if they don't want it. If it doesn't align with their values, they're not going to support it. The question is the balance and degree of the political and social agenda Disney's products are now viewed by many conservatives as an empty virtue signaling and endless attempts to indoctrinate children. Moreover, when the company publicly declares its opposition to popular parental rights bill in Florida, it is moving away from a commercial to a political focus. That is the problem with the individual hand. You can bring movies to the public. You cannot make them sell. Disney brand is now negatively associated with activism by a significant number of consumers. The company is now even reporting the decline in licensing revenue from products associated with Star Wars, Frozen, Toy Story, and Mickey and Friends. Iconic and once unassailable corporate images. And they are losing billions. And Bob Iger can come out and say that they've instructed people to Stay out of the corporate world wars and this and the, the the culture wars and the corporate wars and this and that and the other, but they've done a lot of damage. And it will take and I'm I you can tell. You know, they promoted uh Dave Filoni into some kind of creative control thing next next to Kathleen Kennedy, whatever. But even the people like Dave Filoni, which some of us once had trust in, he's lost all benefit of the doubt because of some of the things he's been involved with now in putting out products. His name is on it, and they suck because they're blatant political and social agendas and the things he's rolling out. The only way this takes care of itself, Disney has to publicly get out of the social justice business and of the the political agenda business, but they've got to clean house of their top dogs. Kathleen Kennedy has to go. That's all there is to it. Kevin Feige, I don't know how you ever trust him again. I mean, he once made a point to say, we are going woke. That's my next priority. That should never be a priority. Your priority should be like, I'm looking for the next great Marvel story to honor the original origins of some character, period, and be respectful of it. Oh, we're going to do a live-action Snow White. That thing should look so close to the original product. I mean, there should be no deviations from it. I mean, a live-action movie should be a, a, a nod, a love letter to the original, the original animated feature. Not some nonstop political bullshit agenda on a two-hour social justice activism ad. Nobody wants to watch that. Nobody's going to watch that. Nobody's watching that. You see what happened with the Marvels? You just put out a movie, the MCU did, Marvel did, with three characters nobody gives a rat's ass about. Don't care. And now, sadly, they'll probably bring back Chris Evans... They'll probably bring back Robert Downey Jr. And they'll ruin Endgame. I mean, look, you wrote him out of the story. That was a, a, a whatever it was, 20 movie, I mean, symphony that played out wonderfully that ended with Infinity War and Endgame. And then to a lesser extent wrapped up with, with um, the Spider-Man movie after that. And then you're gonna you're gonna bring them back? What are you gonna do? Jake Skywalker them? By the way, simple little things don't make Sam Wilson Captain America. 
He's not Captain America. If you want to move away from Captain America, fine. But don't try to repackage him. By the way, that movie's been delayed now. They know it's going to bomb. That's not Captain America. That's the Falcon carrying a damn shield around. You know? I mean, stop it. Yeah, That's the other thing. Quit treating people like me that are actual fans of the, these products and we grew up with. Quit pissing in our face and telling us it's rain. We know exactly what these products are supposed to look, sound, and feel like. And you're giving us none of it. None of it. I mean, it's so bad it's gotten to the point we hardly make videos on this channel too much anymore because, in, in large part, we don't care anymore about those products. Shit. <laughs> Indifference. Yikes. That's never good for a brand. Tell me what you think, Matrix and Roadshow fans. Peace. I'm out. Till next time. Thank you.